Well, here we are back at it. I, uh, this is what I've come up with for the doors. I'm hoping it works. If not, it's not a big deal. It's not too intrusive, but these are pockets also. You can put stuff in them. I also found some bigger netting. For some reason, these are really expensive. And I don't think the quality is as good. Like these. These are a little nicer, but you can buy four of these for the price of one of them, which, whatever. So I'm going to go ahead and get this stuff knocked out when I get back. We'll just start hitting it all. This video will be the end of this. We got to get it all done. I got to do this diesel heater install. You can tell I've had it for a little while. Uh, got to looking at the instructions. There's no really anything on it. Uh, so I came up with my own little plan here. I went ahead and drew lines. It's not lined up now. That way I can show you. Basically like that. Just drew around it. Put the holes in there. Did the, uh... Let me turn your light on. It's hard to see because it's painted, but there is lines back here in the holes. That way, when you look at the bottom, let's put this on the side. Now you have one of these is intake, one of these is exhaust. Um, what what I don't know is I don't know how hot this. Ex I think this is the exhaust one, but I don't know how hot that's going to get. And this is going to be going through wood, so I think I have a plan. Now, the way we're going to do it, this is if you're going to hide this machine somewhere, you can, I guess, have a little piece of duct work. These we're not using. Pretty much garbage for me. So we'll put it where I put everything on the other bench. Now, cold air obviously should be coming in through the back. And then hot air, hot air out this side. It doesn't really... I mean, it's just this little tiny unit, so I'm I'm just assuming. And then that means the front port says waste gas, which I'm thinking is exhaust. The other one is the intake stuff, so this will be going in, which is okay. I mean, this doesn't really matter to me. But what I don't like, that's the pipe they give you. I bent it already because I was trying to do, like, how tight I can bend it, still go up through. Uh... And this hole is going to have to be a little big because, like I said, I don't know how hot this is going to get. My my plan, I don't know what gauge this is, might say on there. Uh, it's 12 by 12, 16 gauge. Pretty heavy, pretty thick. I'm going to hole saw a big piece of this out. And then I'll hole saw a smaller piece and then weld an exhaust, old, I don't know, exhaust pipe from who knows what I worked on. Uh to this to where this will fit inside as like a heat shield through that wood that this doesn't have to be as big as it is but whatever and then i went out back and i got these off these are heat shield pieces off some piping i had out there i think i can wrap this good enough and then I'll use some wire tie and then I can stick it in there. And this is basically just going to act to where, I don't know, rodents or bugs or whatever can't crawl through this into our space. Oh yeah, and I don't know why it has this little muffler thing. I don't know what it's muffling. I, I can't see it being loud. But instead of using this, and in order for me to make this out far enough to where it won't backdraft... had some of this old galvanized conduit laying around and it happens to fit perfect over it i don't know if i'm going to trust just clamping it like they suggest i might i might tack weld around that once i get everything fit all right we've got to get the building this now uh we're just going to go big or hope that's not the right drill bit in there either i'm hoping it works just take a hole just do some basic math here so that's about six and a quarter plus seven sixteenths so it'll be about seven and a sixteenth get down with it two and three quarter 
ish. All right, I went ahead and hit that with some of this high heat. That's what that looks like. Uh, I'm gonna test fit and then remove this and get the carpet installed. So let's get this test fit real quick. Hmm. Now maybe I'll stick it from underneath. Actually, that looks really good. It's hard to see under there. That pipe does fit. When I permanently put this in is when I'll wrap some of that uh, heat shielding that at least plugs that gap up to where no critters will grow, crawl up in there. I'm gonna get all this uh, crap out of here and clean this floor and start putting this. Ultra bond moisture resistant. I don't know carpet adhesive We'll figure it out Well, all I did to prep it a little bit of water wash nothing fancy I uh, Was trying to read the instructions on this thing and right there I Had to get my old man glasses on it says, for instructions, consult the technical data sheet or M-A-P-E-I-S, technical service department. I, that, that doesn't help me at all. So I'm just going to guess. Got the uh, rough end kind of cut done. Then the, the other trim out after these wrinkles are stretched, I can cut it after it's glued down a little bit in this corner, but that's not a big deal. Okay, I gotta go find out if I have the right trial now. I haven't done this in forever. All right, I could not find a trial. I'm just gonna try the roller out. I'm sure it'll work. If it won't, oh well. It looks good in here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take some time. I got to finish these little pieces here. And then I need to go around with a little bit of stain, stain around the window. Then I'm going to caulk this white after that dries. Same with this door frame. I need to, I'm just going to do this. I need to trim this piece up here because there's a little, a little bit of a lip. Uh, and then same around this window. I need to, a little bit of stain to let that blend. Then we'll just caulk all that white to hide everything. And once that's done, we're gonna start installing the front cabinet stuff, cooler, jackery. Um, we have a bunch of other crap that we're gonna be putting in here. And I think there was a couple of, I, I need to just make a list. That's all there is to it. But I'm gonna get this other crap done and then we're gonna get into something fun again. Well, I guess we're on to the diesel heater install. It looks kind of like they want you to clamp this pipe on there. Uh, I am a little worried about gas. That's not a very good fit. It does look like they give you a hole though for your screwdriver to fit in, which that's a bonus. I'm going to go a little bit more. We're going to put in some of this gasket maker. Should be high temp. I didn't really pay attention. Permatex, the right stuff. 90 minutes, flexible. Well, even if it's not, it'd be better than what it has. I'm going to go get this set in place. This will have to be kind of bent a little bit, but then uh, then we're going to get under there. We're going to use that. 
I think that's one inch, might be three quarter, eh, it looks like one inch EMT. This fits perfectly over it. We'll do the exact same thing. We'll put some RTV. I'm gonna try and get it from where it is in the front there. Let's see here. In the front there, all the way out to that side to where we don't have to worry about the, uh, hopefully we don't have to worry about the exhaust. Look out. This is a high temp, it's got like, I don't know, fiberglass or something woven in there. I'm just gonna take this right around that line. Oh. Get out more, come on. There we go. Perfect dish. And I'm gonna wrap it. And then I need to get some wire. Let me go find the wire. Okay, and that's where she's gonna sit. We're gonna secure it down. This I did not hardwire in, uh, mainly because I don't know how much I'm gonna like this. Now I got to figuring out what this exhaust thing was because I wasn't sure what it was for. So I ripped this piece out because it was just barely tacked in there. And it has this spring in there. And there's like, some sort of insulation down in there. I don't know if this is supposed to be for noise. I can't see that thing being loud. I don't see the point in this thing. I'm, I'm assuming it's a muffling device, but I don't... Maybe it's like catches flame or something? I don't know. I'm not using it. We're gonna put this on the side. So we need to crawl underneath. Nice and rainy today. I think if we just take it, we just take that thing just straight over here and just stick a little tip of that pipe out. All right, that's the exhaust pipe coming out there. I fastened it. Then underneath, I used some of that, uh, I don't know what you call it, plumber's tape, I guess. Now we need to get this front toolbox installed. And we need to bolt that in. So these drawers need to come out. And I'm probably going to do some spray and bed liner in there while they're out. We'll do a little degreasing and a little scuff. Uh, and then we'll finish building this bracket and our jackery stand. And there should be plenty of room for our bucket toilet. We're going to get on getting this bracket here built. Well, it's already built. we got to get the tabs to bolt here, here. And we need to figure out how we're going to make a shelf in this area for the jackery to sit on. Uh, all right, I previously made this when I was making the other brackets. I will grind this all up and get it painted. First, we need to get our little feet put on. This will go like this for the cooler to drop in, but I'm gonna need to come off of this in two places. This bar here will hold kind of the jackery in place and then this lower one will be where we uh, fasten a piece of wood to. Oh yeah. Now my dilemma is this head's so fat here it's gonna be difficult to get down in there. Now this is all just test fit and we do got to test fit all this before we can keep building. 
as usual I'm overthinking this whole project because now this little bit of wasted space here I kind of want to make a shoe rack if I make a shoe rack then I can incorporate that shelf platform with it I'm gonna just magically make a plan again see what I can come up with to where I can still take the top off this heater still put fuel in it and have a place to put hiking shoes and some other stuff probably like two three we'll just say we can maybe put four pair of hiking shoes in there I'm gonna see how difficult I can make it otherwise it just seems like a waste okay I'll be back with a plan I'm sure well I uh, got an idea now I'm gonna use this old piece of uh, diamond plate aluminum I've had it for probably 20 years. It used to be a top to one of my cabinets when I was a fabricator. And it's been sitting around a long time. So I drew out my pattern, which it looks like I used to have another pattern on here and I decided not to use it. So the new one is just two simple cuts here. Uh, and I bought one of these Bad Dog Tool cutoff wheels. I want to see if it works in aluminum. I think it does. But here we go. We're going to try it out. this framework over this half inch tubing uh, I'm just gonna try and get everything laid out I'll 45 this I don't know what that angle is but we'll just start guessing on these angles and get it get it worked out now a good cut is only a grind away so we're not gonna worry about it too much because the weld will fill the gap well, that should do. We already got it kind of cleaned up. Uh, now we need to add a bar nine inches over for our uprights. Get her welded. I uh, got it all done, ground up. I'm gonna go over there and do some fitting. I need to get uh, height measurements. This is the way this sits, like that. I'll need to get a measurement from where that is to the floor so then we can put in little cross members and we're gonna have the shoes at a little bit of a slope I gotta figure out how many of them and I gotta get all this crap off this thing I'm just gonna paint this black I don't want to have to go through the whole polishing of this it's just gonna look like shit so we're just gonna paint it all Okay, I'm gonna go get measurements. Get this welded up. This needs paint. That bracket in there needs paint. And then we need to do some more fabrication because I need to build a handle and put the step underneath. All right, I got those pieces all ground down, put together, painted. Um, I still haven't figured out how I'm gonna mount them yet, so we're not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna move on to the step. This step, I know it doesn't, that this trailer doesn't need much, but it does kind of get old lifting your foot that high. And this step hangs down too low 
the way it is now, I'm afraid that I would run it into something. Uh, so in order to get this up, I gotta start cutting this apart. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hack it here, and I gotta hack three and a quarter inches off here, and then this should this should hit the bottom of the the floor, which I and I can weld this to one of the cross beams, and then this part lands I don't know like kind of on the edge of another cross beam, maybe in a quarter inch, so that so I'll be able to get a decent weld on this. Um, be a pretty simple install, really difficult to explain it under the trailer. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this cut, cut, get some this prep uh, paint ground off. Pretty much just go get it welded on because it's very difficult to see. the correct way it works when even when it got bound in there it didn't explode like most of them so thumbs up there all right I'm gonna go get this thing put on and there's the step it's uh it's offset a little bit just because of the way I had to put it on there but it works nice and strong let's see I'm thinking does not hang down hardly at all. That's really nice. I guess we're onto this handle. This, we gotta make some sort of a handle. Make it a little easier getting in and out of this thing. While those parts are drying, we need to figure out a handle to bolt on there to get up and in and out. Um, found this piece that I don't mind cutting up, but it's a little, a little awkward to hang on to. It's a little bit big. Uh, this piece would have been ideal. I made, who the heck knows what I made years ago. But if you look down it, you can see that it's bent. So this one's also out of the question. So I'm going to put this back in my, don't know what to do, pile. So this one needs to be put away because that's going to just be in the way. And we're down to, I think I must have made a, a homemade hoe for some reason. But I think it looks straight. It's about the right size to hang on to. Uh, my other concern is going to be I want that to sit away from the door enough to where you can throw a towel on it or something else over the top. I was going to make a really nice bend and I need it to, I need it to be a, that at the top. come up with to keep this thing straight unfortunately my straight edge uh, the numbers wipe off with brake clean so I'm missing numbers in the vital area but that straight edge will keep these two pieces here straight and then I just lined up it's 35 inches from the top to the bottom hole I went ahead and cut these down to two inches I'm gonna get these squared up in the center now I am going to leave this galvanizing on there. Just be careful when you weld galvanizing. It could make you sick. Just to let you know. It looks something like that when I'm done. A little high up there. A little low down here. Uh, so I'm going to spend some time getting this thing squared up. And change the battery. I'll be back when this is welded. Because I'll feel better about it. 
Well, here's that handle. Looks good. I painted it with like a bed liner material. Uh, ran out of real black paint, but this will do. I put quite a few coats on it. Now we've been going ahead and starting to get other things laid out. I put a couple of leftover nets here for things that we're going to use outdoors. This is going to be like spices because, like I said, I don't know, maybe a video or two ago, this is going to be our cooktop area. And that's the reason I got this style of toolbox that opens forward instead of one that opens up or you know there's all kinds of configurations but i figured this is where our cooking stuff will be let's see there we go uh that way you know there's extra fuel in there uh when we're cooking if i need anything out of this bin and this bin drops forward i don't have to worry about it then I can use this spender as another cooktop, which I think I might paint this black also. Uh, this big tote here is where we're gonna put like our muck boots, things like that for when we go either clam digging or fishing. We got, let's see here, turn that on. We got power, lights. Now, we went ahead and put all the racks in here. The shoe rack will work out good unless you have feet like mine, then you'll have to kind of like finagle them in there, but you know, smaller feet are better. I finally got fuel in this, so I kind of want to fire it up because I've never messed with it with this remote. Really don't know if the remote even works. So, let's plug it in and fire it up. I think this is the last step. Red light on that means there's power. Let's see here. Um, I'm sure. Um, oh, there's there's air. Oh. Uh, it doesn't like something. I don't know what it doesn't like. It's not pulling too many watts. Let's try it again. We're gonna see how many watts it pulls up here. Huh, it doesn't like something. It's not blowing a fuse. It's not overloading a outlet. It's so weird. All right, I'm gonna unplug it out of this. I'm gonna plug it into the jackery itself. Maybe the jackery just can't handle this power. It's doing the same thing. For some reason it's acting like it's overloading here. Cause that's flickering. And then the DC shuts off. Well, I guess I can't run this diesel heater off of Jackery. Um, everything else is pretty much done except for us loading it up to go camping, but I can't do anything. Well, I can. It's just going to be cold. So, yeah, I don't understand how much of a draw this thing has to ignite so it says 13.5 volts turn it on the fan kicks on as soon as it goes to ignite okay uh I may end up having to run a separate battery just for this. That's why I'm glad I didn't like wire an outlet down here because I wasn't quite sure. The Jackery will run everything else. It runs the cooler fine. It runs the fan. It runs everything else. Um, let's let's plug the cooler in. Yeah. See, so it doesn't mind the cooler. 
set at 57 we'll turn this oh we'll leave it at 32 that back in uh let's see so this is running we're at 31 watts now all our interior lights are on let's turn the fan on i want to see how much we can run all okay turn that on that is only pulling 62 watts right now 66 okay let's do some outside lights we're going to turn both lights on yeah okay all four that's pretty much everything running that i have wired in this except for the heater i don't know what to do there and we're only pulling 84 watts and that's with this at 55 degrees and we have it turned down to 32 so this is running full out right now which i know this cooler will drop down to about three watts when it's just maintaining temperature so i guess i'm gonna have to figure out this diesel heater i didn't expect that to happen so i guess if i can find a small enough battery to run the heater and be able to run a trickle charger to it to maintain I'm going to go figure something out. This will be kind of interesting. Figure out what I can come up with. Um, then we'll do an update and a close out of this video. Well, here's what I came up with. I found a little tiny battery that I had that's probably bad, but it said 12 volts for now. It is running. It's still cold, but you can hear a... I think that's the fuel pump, maybe? And this is kind of ramping up. Oh, oh I just heard it kick on near it okay let's see how warm this thing gets it's not terribly warm down there I can touch it I definitely smell diesel when it's ramping up I can hear it I don't know what all this means timer and then lock I guess I should look at instructions Hertz. It doesn't really have a temperature, but it is warm. Things are just getting faster and faster and faster. It would suck if it burst into flames after this build. Well, it's really cooking now. Alright, let's go check the exhaust. Oh yeah, you can hear it, it's pretty warm, stuff in it, ouch that's hot, no oh, shit that's exhaust. Well there it is, it's actually working, it runs off this battery, I've, uh, I've got some extra pigtails on this thing so I can add uh, I'm gonna have to add some sort of a float charger if I have to use a battery like this. It sucks that Jackery couldn't, uh, they just couldn't handle it, I guess. All right, I'm gonna have to do some, some research on this. I'm gonna have to find a place for a battery, a little float charger that plugs into the Jackery, and then um, we're gonna take this thing out and test it. And that's, that's where I'll probably end up having a different video a full walk around how everything's working out what i wish i would have changed or not i mean who knows you could have a build you enjoy i will be adding a few more things i just don't know what they all are this is good enough for now this is what we need um really don't like that thumping noise it's making so i, I just have to figure a few more things out but i, I do like the heater Ooh, it's gonna get toasty i don't think i would run this overnight maybe get it nice and warm go to bed shut it down and then if you get too cold you can always just turn it back on but it really pumps out some heat anyways i'm gonna end it here 
thanks for watching tune into the next one when we take this actually camping